Oh, wait a minute. Hold on now. Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Zareth Prevails. Have you ever wondered what separates us from animals? The answer may upset you, but the uh, the truth is Datacrons. It, that, that's just what separates us from animals, guys. And that, So we're going to talk about a shopping list for Datacrons because we have the new upcoming Conquest season and it's a good time to plan it because you guys can work on... This is our last chance, our last Conquest to get this set. It's important. Uh, another important thing are my patrons. You guys are awesome. Thank you guys so much for your support, guys. I truly appreciate every single one of you. Uh, I, I couldn't do it without you. Honestly, you guys are awesome. And guys, if you want to support this channel for free... All you gotta do is hit that thumbs up button, like, subscribe, comment, mount the algorithm, guys. The algorithm uses Datacrons, which means I don't, it's not, not an animal. It kind of looks like one in this picture, but it, apparently it's not, because that would be contradictory to the canon I just uh, fabricated. So I, I do have an infographic for this Datacron set. I have the larger infographic as well both of them are free on my discord server you can find the link to that in the video description uh, go hang out guys it's a big community and a lot of very knowledgeable people there to hang out with if you just want the datacrons that's fine soon enough i'm going to have a sign up thing to be able to notify you can sign up for notifications on if you want to uh, have uh, like if you want to be updated when a new infographic is out then you can sign up for that you can also sign up for notifications on uh, when i go live and you can come watch me use these datacrons live on twitch it's also free you can find the link to that in the video description to my twitch channel etc lots of things lots of links you can find but the let's let's just go talk about this infographic guys and how to use it so uh whoa my face is enormous and that's fine uh, <laughs> we're trying to make it less enormous frankly but uh, okay so these are all in uh, priority order here right folks so uh, you know you want to get if you can you can get the Holdo Cron first and then the Beck Cron and Bane and if you don't have one of these just move to the next one so uh, you know a little bit less busy than that monstrous one that I, I'm constantly uh, that, that I make on the first season of of GAC but uh, let, let's do let, let's do a little bit more of, of a close compare here folks so um, uh, or a closer zoom so the first data Cron that I think you guys should be working on. Honestly, this is this is a really strong one. Holdo is really strong, and uh, so the it, you know it goes with Ray. It's intended to go with Ray now in threes. I think that the Ray Cron is actually a little bit better than the Holdo Cron. That's that's just my opinion, but I do think that the Ray one is better. Uh, so if you want to get both, that's great. Otherwise, Holdo Cron is good, and uh, the first the level three is just so that as Ray's friends die, she becomes more and more uh, able to just destroy her friends. Uh, this, the level six is one that's really strong because uh, you have to hurt every resistance character's health before you can kill anyone on the team and that that just makes it an extremely tough to accomplish task uh, in fives because Ray is constantly handing out her uh, a bunch of bonus protection and so you want a lot of health on this because all of that bonus protection that she's handing to her team is going to be informed by health or health steal is also nice to keep Ray alive a little bit and then obviously the Holdocron because there's a lot of foresight going on and it, it's just a uh, it's a really obnoxious team to face, to be honest, folks. All right, next up is Kelleran Beck, and uh, this is a really interesting Kron because it really kind of just takes the place of the Qui-Gon Jinn Kron, or, or just Qui-Gon Jinn Omicron team in GAC, and, uh, but it's going to be a lot stronger than that team, honestly. And uh, so Qui-Gon Jinn gets to just ride the bench, wait for his replacement master Qui-Gon to be released, and of course, uh, they'll do totally different things. But uh, the whole basis of this Datacron, and, the, and in fact, Kelleran Beck's kit is him having an enormous amount of 
oh, excuse me folks, uh, an enormous amount of protection. And so you want a ton of protection on here. At uh, the level six, you could have the one where it's no revive. That that could be kind of nice. Uh, but otherwise, at uh, the level six, that they're gonna hit a little bit harder. And then um, you know you want the Keller and Beck one. He's going to be the lead. Uh, I don't know exactly what teams I'm going to be. Uh, using with him so stay tuned folks for my offense and defense GAC videos which are uh, going to be released in about a week from now uh, right before the G the new 5v5 GAC season starts but for now just farm these these crons I know that not everyone has Beck but uh if you <laughs> they're not they don't have him at their Beck and call certainly and uh I just think it, he's you should be farming a lot of people should be farming him at least maybe not everyone but both of my smaller accounts are rapidly are farming him as hard as they can because i mean kellerin beckons folks it's that simple he's going to destroy people he, with kieti mundi he's going to just completely destroy a ton of different galactic legends and uh they're, they're just not going to be able to get back back up again Alright, the next guy we're going to talk about is absolutely Bane Nanas. He is going to banish a ton of different Galactic Legends as well, and it's almost like you almost you almost don't need a Datacron. He, he is crazy. We all thought that he was just going to go and hang out with the Eternal Emperor, until we realized that he was so strong that... He shouldn't be with Sith Eternal Emperor, except it made Territory Wars it's nice, because Sith Eternal Emperor and Bane don't die, so they can get perfect banners, so that, that's kind of nice. But otherwise, this Datacron is nice because he summons a third Sith, and uh, at one point I actually I lost a, an entire GAC match because uh, I was just kind of stupid, and so, like, be careful about this. Don't just take the Datacron, you have to have a second Sith there to work with Rule of Two. Uh, be, instead I went in with the Rule of One, and I, I think on some level I thought that it was going to be uh, like the second character that was summoned was going to count as the Rule of Two, but it didn't work, and I actually lost to Darth Revan, which was a little bit funny because it, in, in a lot of ways, Bane, in fact, did adhere to the rule of two uh, because Darth Revan eliminated him and, you know, chiseled it back to rule of two. And uh, I just wasn't in Bane's favor. It wasn't wasn't very pleasant on my end. But uh, at the end of the day, this this is uh, an incredibly strong Kron and, uh, you know, you you your red trooper is consistently going to die and your add whoever it's going to be and so the level three makes a lot of sense the level six is only there it's not because he can't ignore taunt he can ignore taunt that's in his kit but the level six is just i call it ignore taunt because it's easier to identify it as that but it also does percent health damage it does a little bit more damage it, the level six is not something you should really worry too much about like i would probably reroll stats to, to get him more health or health steal or offense before i worried about his level six. All right, the next one is Zori, and obviously it's not a Zori Kron. Maybe it's not obvious, but for those of you who don't know how to read or look at images, but uh, there are uh, the level nine is going to be Finn, but you, no one ever says you lose to a Finn team. Someone said that once. I was like, oh what? And they were like, oh a Zori team. I was like, oh yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so. Uh, this is a really interesting one, guys. In 3 is this pretty strong. I think in 5s it's going to be even more annoying because level 6 especially. Well, first off, the whole team loves Tenacity Up. Really love that. Uh, poor Rose is going to be kind of... I mean, she'll probably still be on the best version of the team, but she's not as needed as, as the other uh, as usual because the level 3 picks up so much slack. Uh, the level 6 is nice because as as with the Ray slash Holdo squad, the Tenacity is going to make this team... Or not tenacity. Uh, tenacity is nice, but the the lack of damage to your health pool is going to make this team an incredibly tough team to beat, which is why we have protection as the main stat here, because you don't want people to be able to whittle your team down to just health. And, uh, you know, some offensive obviously is nice too, but a lot of your damage is based off of percent health damage, like exposes anyway, so uh, this team is going to be really interesting in fives. Well, we'll see how that goes. I have very mixed feelings about Darth Sidious and his Kron guys because so many people fail with him consistently unless, uh, you know, the lower red level you are, the better the better uh, chances you are maybe of, of being able to succeed with him. I know it's easy, it's a very appealing Kron because everyone who has Sid Eternal Emperor has Sidious at at least Relic 7. It would be nice to get some use from this character and it's nice because it's a one 
character team, which means you just you, you don't have to farm anything, you don't have to use any other resources, because no one uses Sidious anyways. He's just kind of a worthless character in a lot of ways. And, and so in in the threes, he was pretty inconsistent. I'm curious to see how he does in fives, if he's just not going to be that usable. He's Wampa Reborn, basically. and uh, But it, like he's going to be hitting back a lot more in fives, so maybe it'll, it'll end up being that... He does better because he's uh, he's hitting back a lot and he's health stealing and stuff. In threes, they, the good characters cycle through their turns faster. I'm very interested to see how he does in fives. But though in in fives, they're also going to have more cleanses available, which you know he relies on damage over times being applied to people. So uh, you know the ignore taunt level six that that's pretty cool, but. I, does he ignore taunt anyways? I don't remember. He usually just spams his AoE regardless. You want him to be a little survivable. So health, health steal is really nice here because he'll uh, he'll be hitting back and he's going to be healing himself if that happens. Uh, some offense also. Uh, sometimes he just kills the team because he hits them really hard. Uh, you know, and he ramps his damage, etc. So th this, is, this is kind of an infuriating Kron. And I think I've lost the most matches so far uh, because of that uh, because of this Kron this season than anything else. <laughs> uh, and he does adhere to the rule of one, in fact, as silly as that is. Silly goose. Which he's not really a goose, guys. We all know animals can't use data crons. Next up, we've got Jedi Kel, and honestly, this is more of a Jedi Master Luke Kron. Uh, you want a lot of protection. You get, I guess we can't see that here. Oop, there's the protection. You want the protection because, uh, I've said it before, folks, that uh, G Jedi Kel is not Jedi Master Luke's lifter. Uh, Jedi, Jedi Master, sorry, Jedi Master Luke's lifter. Jedi Master Luke's lifter is a Datacron with 100% potency on it, or protection on it, because protection, it, it increases his damage and the damage of his entire team. And, uh, you know, you can just cycle through it. It's, it's so strong. And, uh, you know, the, the level six uh, with the health, uh, you know, an offense 100% that, that does increase their damage. Though, I, I do like the no revive with Jedi Master Luke as well, because then they, <laughs> a lot of the off meta counters that rely on reviving, like a dash Vandor team, for instance, will just have no, no ability to do that. Like, you could almost put it on defense. There are a few teams that destroy it on defense still, so maybe don't do it, but I do like its flexibility with the no revive for sure. All right, and the last two here, folks, we've got Trench, and he is, he's a spider, but he's, he's still, uh, can use a Datacron, apparently. And, and then Stap, Stap, of course, represents General Grievous. I know a lot of people aren't going to have Stap, at least not initially. I'm farming him like crazy right now, really trying to get him ready for this 5v5 season. At some point, his Omicron combined with the level 9 on Stap is going to be really strong, folks. And level 6, handing out Target Lock, really, really good. You could... You could also have a, a Geo Cron here, but I, I hate Geonosians, and honestly, they're, they're, I don't think they're as relevant as people wish they were. In in Territory Wars, they are still very, very relevant. Uh, the Trench team is also very strong. It's going to be a lot stronger in 5v5 than it was in 3v3. Honestly, uh, he's going to be able to use a lot of it. The level 6, the Daze Immune, is really nice because that team really, super struggles against Daze. And then, uh, you know, the Trench Cron is really good. The Both of these guys get potency and tenacity up and then you probably want health on both of them more on grievous than anyone because you know if his damage is based entirely off of health sorry about the creaking folks my stupid desk doesn't let anything uh <laughs> doesn't let you lean on it it's it's frustrating but uh one way or another guys these are both really good the staff cron obviously the last one on the list last priority because not a lot of people are going to have him. I do think it's going to make some crazy amounts of waves for a lot of people uh, at, in the, the upcoming GAC season. Well, whether it's not, whether or not it's worth it to put his Omicron on for just a couple seasons of absolute dominance, it, it's questionable. I don't know how it's going to go, but I'm I'm in incredibly intrigued, and I, I can't I can't wait for, to find out. Um, one one last thing I I think. 
Oh yeah, there it is. So the extra credit, folks. This is just a box. I replaced the stats box. I think it was fairly self-explanatory. Anyways, I replaced it with extra credit. If you want more use out of this Datacron set, you don't have all the characters that I've listed, or you have you already have all of these. Uh, these are other ones that you could farm, and they just have some bare minimums. You know, Malgus would love to get max health because he does damage based off his health. Uh, uh, Kit Fisto is going to go on a Jedi Master Kenobi squad, most likely. Gen General Skywalker is going to, uh, like, as his friends die, he gets stronger and stronger, and then you really want some protection stat that's really good for him, um, and, you know, you want some spare no revive Jedi because it's nice to be able to ignore people reviving, uh, or being able to revive. It's a nice flexibility thing, and then Supreme Leader Kylo, he gives no rats asses about his friends. He doesn't even know what rats are, so I can't, you can't blame him, but his friends can die, and he just doesn't care at all. And as they die, in fact, he's kind of happy because he's gaining more speed and more offense. Okay, so that's it. What things do you think should be on the list? I would love to hear what your thoughts are on this Datacron set. Uh, thank you all so much for watching, and remember that in all things, Xerath prevails.